there guys, Aaron Charlie here from Throw Football DRFC, your Dogs Drivers fan channel. It is review time, it's been a couple of days since the match but uh, I thought this is the best chance I've got to do it. I've been really busy over this last couple of days, so this is like the only chance I've had to uh, do this. But I'm going to officially share my analysis on that pre-season match. Uh, 3-2 defeat against Newcastle. I want to give a massive shout out to Adam Pearson and Kendall um, who was doing the fan cams, who got their own fan cams. Adam in the match vlog and of course Kendall's fan cam came in a separate video as well. Um, obviously shout out to every single one of the Newcastle fans that came down to that match. It was brilliant to see all the atmosphere going around that, that game. And, um, you know, it was such a great atmosphere and it was so, so great to, uh, to see all of that. Uh, but in this video, we're going to look at the team lineup, share my thoughts and share my uh, review on this match. Now, before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss the, the video. And let's get straight into this one. So, uh, we have to start with the team lineups and it says as follows. Um, obviously, the Newcastle lineup, uh, we had Dan Langley in goal. Uh, Jacob Murphy, Captain Joel Lascelles, Paul Dummett, uh, Jamal Lewis, Isaac Hayden, Jeff Hendricks, Sean Longstaff, Ryan Fraser, Alan St. Maximan and Callum Wilson. On the bench, Thompson, Clark, uh, Matty Longstaff, uh, Gail, Fernandez, Watts, Allen, McEntee, Young and Bondswell. Uh, three of those youngsters, I believe, making their first ever first team appearances. So, uh, big up themselves. Uh, now, Doncaster starting 11. We've got Lewis Jones in goal, uh, Carl Noyle, Tom Anderson, uh, Roshan Williams uh, in there as well, Tommy Rowe at left back, Ben Close in the midfield uh, with Lewis Reed, who was one of the trialists, and Matt Smith. Jordi Huula down one wing, Shane Harrison, the other trialist, down the other wing. And we had Thiago Chakur up front to start the match. Now, obviously, for uh, for goals, if you want the goal scorers, uh, Ro as you can see in the top corner uh, of your screen earlier, it'll come back uh, once the team lineups have gone from your screen. Uh, Rowe, uh, sorry, uh, first of all, Newcastle starting off with Fraser in the 12th minute, then Sean Longstaff in the 14th minute, then we had Rowe in the 30th minute, then Callum Wilson scoring his first goal for Newcastle in front of the fans in the 56th minute and then Omar Bogle scoring in the 76th minute now obviously you guys are going to want to know what my thoughts are on this match and obviously I, I didn't talk about substitutions when we were going about lineups because obviously there was a load of substitutions so I didn't want to sort of go into detail about all those subs but we did have some substitutions come on uh, during that match um so what do I think of the game overall you know what, I think tactically, in terms of tactics and how we played, I think we were better than Newcastle. I, I think at least for, you know, the entirety of the second half and also most of the first half, I think that we were better tactically. It's just the result we didn't get right, but there was loads of positives to take out of that match. And I think that we did a, overall a great job. Omar Bogle getting that goal, I so wanted him to score that goal because... Some of the fans on social media that were so negative to Omar Bogle. Oh, get rid of him, get him gone, get rid of him, get him gone. Before we even kicked a ball, you know, I felt it was quite unfair on Bogle. And, you know, I said for months on this channel, my advice to the fans would have been, give him this season to work under Wellens. He will get better as a player. Let him work under this new era. Let him work this season under Wellings. If it doesn't come off and he's the same type of player that he was uh, in the last few months of the previous campaign when we were so negative, we weren't getting the results, we were getting continuous losses. Let him work this season with the new era. If he didn't come off a better player, then we um, persuade the club to let him go. But I said, let him work this season under the new era because I'm sure we can transform him into a better player. We've started already. When we were playing in other preseason matches, he looked decent without getting the goals. Now he's got a goal. Now we can start getting him firing again. So with Omar Bogle, like I said, be patient and just wait for the eventual LT to happen. He'll get better. Just give him time. And we've given him time. Well, I've given him time, and I know a lot of people are giving him time now. And he's working. He's doing better. He's got the goal. He's doing better. 
Got to work on his positioning at times. We noticed that against Rosington. He's got to work on his positioning at times. He's improved that against Newcastle. And against tougher opposition, he improved that. So, Bogle, for me, is a must. He's a must to be involved in the first team because he is improving now. Tommy Rowe was exceptional. Callum Loyal was another level as well on the on the other side of the fullback positions. Um, I think Ben Close was great. Matt Smith. I've had Newcastle fans left, right and centre telling me... Um, who's that? In fact, Kendall messaged me uh, during the match and said, who's that blonde midfielder? And I said, oh, it's Matt Smith. He's on loan from Arsenal. And she said, my dad loves him. So Newcastle fans love Matt Smith. And I love watching him as well. He was a baller in that game. Uh, I think Lewis Jones pulled off a couple of excellent stops. I think the... Uh, Anderson and Williams trapped back quite well in the defence. Cameron John took over quite well in the duties of the captain's armband. Uh, we had other trailers come on the pitch as well. Obviously, Dan Gardner was still missing through the injury from the Rosington match. Barlow was missing due to illness. Uh, so we had Harrison, we had Reed start the game. Uh, we had other trailers as well. Uh, Max Stedman, I think that's his name, uh, who's a former youth centre back at uh, Sheffield United, I believe. For Correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, Donny Free Press did bring out an article for the trialists, so I'll probably do a daily reports, you know, on that. Um, obviously, we had Dan Crowley, former Arsenal, Hull, Birmingham player, so we had him come on. He looked quite all right. Lewis Reed, for me, if we can bolster up the funds to sign him, I want that to happen. I want Reed signed, I want Shane Harrison signed, and I want Aidan Barlow signed. And if you want me to, and if you're asking me in the comment section, or if you're asking me face to face, or you know, privately on Messenger or something like that, if you're asking me, who do you want to sign, Barlow, Reed, Harrison? If you want me to be optimistic, I want us to sign all three. If you want me to dig inside my gut feelings and think who we will sign, I think the club, and I have faith, will do this. And this is not confirmed, by the way. I think the club could sign all three and I think we should I think I, th I think we we'll should sign all three and I think the club will sign all three I think the club will pull out all the stops and sign all three that's just my personal prediction comment down below if you think we're going to sign all of Barlow Harrison and Reed because in my opinion I think the club will pull out all the stops and we'll sign all three of them so that's just my prediction but I think we'll sign all three uh, but comment down below what you're thinking about that uh, but I think Reed was exceptional I think Harrison put in decent shift uh, obviously, we know from previous games that Barlow had a good run. Uh, it's a shame he couldn't feature in this particular game. But overall, you know, I I'm still happy with Barlow. He's been offered a contract. So, um, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, he accepts it. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with this game. Like I said, Newcastle didn't play tactically well. They played Bruce Ball. It was very backwards, very defensive, very negative. Uh, didn't show the best of the attackers. Alan St. Maximan was deadly with the skill level. We just couldn't keep up with Newcastle on a skill level. But tactically, in terms of the Wellens ball effect, we could play them off the park. So I've got every confidence we'll do that again against other opposition. We've got Sheffield United on Wednesday. Let's see what happens. But um, overall, I'm happy with the performance. It don't matter if we lost 3-2. I think the result was secondary. We beat them. In every department, pretty much, apart from the scoreline. That was the only thing we didn't beat them on. I'm hoping we don't get too many repeats of that during the league season, where we have a few games where we should should have beaten them on every department, but we only beat them on the, every department except the scoreline. I'm hoping we don't get repeats of that during the league season, but fingers crossed, you know, ah, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but that is going to be it, guys. Thank you very, very much. Uh, my name is Aaron Channel from Forever Football, DRFC, Keep on the Rovers Life, and that, my friends, full time. Riverside Die, I'll see you for the preview for Sheffield United on Tuesday. Oh, my God!